You would know more than anybody. You're the foodie in the whole state think, of West Virginia. I think they bring that in from outside. Just a guess. I don't know. It's really good. It's really good. Taylor, we, we hired Taylor. Uh, she's, uh, she's our new uh, sports nutrition lady. Uh, doing a heck of a job. She's in the back all the time. She sits in my meetings. She is at practice. I mean, 24-7, she is in charge of the food that we feed our kids. And, uh, you know, the new training table in the back is just spectacular. I mean, it's a multi-million dollar deal. They did a heck of a job on it. And uh, she's in charge of the menus and everything, so she claims that she picks out fruit better than anybody. And I can't disagree with her. Uh, she's doing a heck of a job. <clears throat> come a long ways. We used to not be able to feed them, and now we can pretty much feed them whatever we want. It's a big commitment from the, um, you know, and this is all NCA driven, obviously, but it's a big commitment from our administration to be able, it's expensive when you're feeding 120 grown men, growing men, so, um, but it's been, it's been great. Along that line, what did, when she, when she came in, what did she think, um, what were her plans as to improving mm -hmm. what you were doing, and as a result, <clears throat> what does she think that would lead to? What, what's the end game of, if you do get them the best? Kids actually eating. I mean, it, it, like, for us, I mean, we like to eat, right? I mean, m most of us, I mean, we, you're a foodie, and we like to eat. I mean, I cooked last night, and it was outstanding. I'll tell you the menu. It was good. I mean, steaks and chicken and cornbread. Uh, corn on the cob, um, fresh green beans, cauliflower mixed in with olive oil and bacon, onions, uh, it's really good, uh, baked potatoes, bacon, butter, sour cream, olive oil on the outside is really good. Um, so th along those lines, it's just, I mean, she comes up at the menu that our guys will eat. And so far, it's been really, really, really good. The presentation's obviously better in the back. Um, but they're back there, and they, they sit down, and they, they're back there for about an hour. They eat. So the end game is, is you want that food to go in their, in their system. <coughs> Eating and sleeping is the key to uh, recovering and getting back on the field as, as, as healthy as you can possibly get. Is, is she to this extent of trying to keep guys from going and eating a McDonald's hamburger, too? Well, you, you, yeah, you'd like them to. I mean, as much as we, as, you know, this time of the year, as much as we feed them, uh, we can prevent it because we're giving them four meals a day, really. Um, when you get into the routine of, <clears throat> when you get into the routine of, of, you know, us giving them like one meal a day, I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, they're going to go do that. We try to educate them to the point to what's good and what's bad. Um, I, I remember days of, you know, kids would fall out in practice, and I'd be like, what, what's wrong with you? And they're like, I'm starving. You know, because they would, like, rush from class, and they'd get over here, and they'd get into meetings, and then they'd go outside, and they'd practice, and they'd fall out because there's nothing in their system. Uh, and we really couldn't give them snacks and stuff. You know, I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, we're asking them to go out there for three hours and, and sweat and run and all that stuff, and they don't have fuel in their body. Um, you know, now it's different. You know, Mike has a snack for them every day 30 minutes before a meeting. So there's never that excuse ever again. I mean, we got protein shakes, we got all the snacks in the, in, down there, and we feed them sandwiches, and uh, you know, so that that that's not going to happen. Um, but you're never going to prevent those kids from eating a late night McDonald's or a pizza or something like that. You know, that's better than nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> we can't give them three meals a day year round. Any more food questions? <laughs> this is a I'm great hungry. conversation. <laughs> what'd you uh, What'd you cook last night? Salmon from the night before. Ah, yeah. Really good. Yeah. I had a salmon. So I went yesterday. So, so I went back there. We had brunch yesterday. Yesterday was our recovery day. All right. So, you know, we, we couldn't practice yesterday. You got to give them a recovery day once once a week. And I uh, went back there. <coughs> it, it, we, it opened at like 1030. So we had a huge brunch. All right. And there was a big pasta bar. So I walked in. I was checking this pasta bar out because it, it was the first time it had been opened back there and had like three different kinds of pastas. Uh, chicken, shrimp, uh, sausage, you know, with every kind of sauce you want, whether you want white sauce or red sauce or whatever, and they just say, put that and that and that and that. And I was like, God, that, that looks good. But there was like 30 people in line. I was in a hurry. So I was like, all right, I'm going to skip that. I'll go over to the omelet station. So I went over to the omelet station because it's brunch. 
and it has 100 different kinds of omelets and all that. And I'm like, that looks pretty good too, but there's 30 people there. <laughs> Once again, I was like, I can't, I don't have time to wait. So I went over to the other station where it's just the main deal, and it was pork tenderloin and salmon. So I had a pork tenderloin, sliced pork tenderloin with a piece of bread, and, and then I made a salmon sandwich, a salmon uh, salad. With, it had just 100 different options with, when it comes to the salad bar aspect of it. So I settled for a salmon salad. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, it's good, good stuff. Well, we'll treat you at some point. When are we going to do that, Mike? It's not on the schedule right now. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's, well, we'll have to, we'll have to schedule that. Okay. Because that, that's, that's really good back there. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, really, really good. Maybe for the weekend, <clears> the game or something, uh, first game, there's a week going on there that we don't have much going on. Maybe. We'll figure it out. Let's get that on the schedule because okay. it, it's really it's one. It's really good, but just to see it for how we're treating our guys, the student athletes and all that are, are you know, Shane and Steve and, and Kelly and those guys have, have, have done a great job of setting that up for us. And it's it's something to look into and write about and experience it. It's really good. It's good. Blue cheese. Yeah, I stopped in and got some sushi on my way home. That was our appetizer while I was cooking. <laughs> <laughs> right? Dave, are you able to measure the difference from the nutrition and the, the effects as it applies to performance? Uh, I don't I don't know how you measure it. You know, it's just one of those things where you, 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 if it's if it's working, there's no issues. It's it's thumbs up. I mean, Mike Mike weighs them in and out like twice a day. <clears throat> so if a guy's if, if a guy's dropping weight then we're going to catch it pretty quick. And what's the number one reason why they drop weight? Well, it's, it's the intake. We know we measure how much they're exerting energy with the GPSs and how much they're running. And, you know, we can, we can measure if they're working hard or if they're not working hard. And there's the science on the GPS aspect of it is, 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 is unbelievable. I, I can go back and say this practice a year ago was, was the numbers. And then yesterday were the numbers and I can compare you know, different practices throughout the course of the year and from year to year to year. Uh, so we know, we know what they're exerting. Uh, if they're dropping weight, that means the intake's not where it needs to be. And we catch it and then, you know, they go, you know, we make them drink four Gatorades or whatever, and then we take them into the, the dining hall. <clears throat> and one of our strength coaches will sit with them or Taylor will sit with them and say, eat this and you ain't moving until you eat it. It's the whole thing, like growing up as a kid, if you don't eat your, your peas, then you got to sit there until you eat your peas. I've spent the night at the dinner table before growing up. Um, but we sit there and we make them eat it. <coughs> as a coach, does it drive you nuts when you don't get a practice during camp like yesterday? I mean, are you just mm. adjusted to that? I thought it would. <coughs> I thought it would, but, but it, I mean, it's good. We ask so much out of them out of the practices that we get. You know, I, I, when I first started coaching at Valdosta State, we had three-a-day practices. We'd practice, you know, hour and a half in the morning, hour and a half in the afternoon, and then like 45 minutes at night. So it was three days. And we spent more time dressing than we did practicing. <coughs> so with, with one-a-day practices, I mean, we're literally out there about three hours, right? So you're, you're out there for a, a long time. I, I, thought I'd, I thought I'd be concerned with it. Uh, the, the morning walkthroughs that we have are – Basically, we can use balls now. I mean, that's basically a, a, a practice in the morning that really doesn't technically count as a practice. Um, no, no, no pads, but it's all mental, you know. And, and half half the practices that you <coughs> that you you focus on the mental aspect of teaching them what to do anyway. Does it help you got an older team? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it helps everything. Um, with the, the the least amount of practices, you know, we got 25 practices, and I think we got about six walkthroughs. Um, some teams will have more walkthroughs based on the fact of when school starts. Once school starts, we start so early, um, you know, that you you can't have practices once you start school. The the walkthroughs, we go to 20 hours once once uh, that that starts. Teams that that don't have school until like after Labor Day. Huge advantage for them because they get they get as many walkthroughs as they possibly want. I think the NCAA needs to look at that. That's not fair. <laughs> but we'll take our 25 practices and our 
six walkthroughs and we'll make the most out of it. Um, some teams will have more. Us having an experienced team probably alleviates the fact that we need that. With mention, you work in a third center. Have you ever had a third center? Ready to go. We have three people that can snap it. I think we have five people that can snap it. We don't have three centers that can play. I don't know where he came up with that. I saw somebody write that. I mean, <clears throat> believe it or not, I look at some of the stuff y'all write. But at least two, right? We have two. I feel really good about two. You know, Matt started 13 games for us last year. Uh, Butchie Grossi right now is ahead of him. You know, that doesn't mean he's going to start, but right now he's running with the first team. Uh, he was hurt last year, so he couldn't play. Um, we have two. We don't have three. I mean, Bryson Mays is going to be a good player for us, but he's a freshman and he's not going to play. Hopefully, he doesn't play. Dana, speaking of that and, and the freshman, have you got in your mind what you want to do with the red shirt rule and play a guy a couple games <clears> and maybe <throat> hold him in case there's an emergency at the end? How, how yeah, I, I, I just I've I've commented on this a lot. I, I don't know how we use it. I think we use it a bunch of different ways. You know, I can see us like playing guys early and saying we need to put him on the shelf. He ain't ready. I can see, <clears throat> you know, game eight. Uh, this kid's like real. Like David Sills was. You know, he's really making a lot of plays on scout team. Let's pull him up. Um, guys get hurt. We need a body. Plug him in. You know, probably end up dressing and traveling more. Then we have, and if they're if we need them, we use them. If we don't, we keep them on the sideline. I think there's a bunch of bunch of different ways to use it. Mm -mm. I don't. <clears throat> nah, I mean, you know, I mean, O line, D line is the hardest stuff to play at this level. Um, I, but with that said, we played what two freshmen that weren't ready to play last year on the D line. Those guys weren't ready to play. We had to use them. <clears throat> so. If if we have a need and a void, we'll we'll, we'll utilize them. But I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to Isaiah Hardy somebody. And what I mean by that, I mean like, you know, he played what sixty snaps last year. You know, Darius Stills played like forty snaps last year. <clears throat> you know, we can probably save that and don't play him unless we absolutely have to, um, and 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 save that year. Jake snickered a little bit about the way Wick interchanges guys on the line in practice. You've been around a lot of O-line coaches. How unconventional is that? Or Jake said it's like a science experiment sometimes, and he, he knows there's a method to it. Is that something you've seen with other O-line coaches to that extent? Yeah, uh, yeah. Probably not to that extent, but we don't do it with our first team guys. <clears throat> you know, it, it's, it's really no different than what we do with receivers. The first team guys are first team guys. Don't don't move those guys around. The the backups you do all kinds of different stuff to see where they fit. You know, I mean, like I mean, Chase Barrett was playing tackle today with the second team. Um, <clears throat> yeah, move those guys around just to get the best ones out there. You know, Gibby kind of does. He's alluded to that. He kind of does that with defense as well. You know, find find the best eleven, start them, don't screw with them, and then the backups. You can mess with that as much as you want to to find what fits. <clears throat> Dan, you hit for the first time full gear. You had full gear on for the first time Tuesday. What was your takeaway? Uh, I, I was pleased with our situations. We did two minute, we did four minute, we did uh, third and play it, <clears throat> um, which, you know, third downs, if you convert, you stay on the field. If you don't convert, then you have to run off the field. And we exchanged it with punt teams and PAT field goal teams. It, 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 it flowed pretty good. I was happy with that. <clears throat> uh, it was sloppy, which is expected. Um, you know, played a lot of bodies and a lot of guys that aren't quite ready to play yet. It's never going to look good. Uh, overall, I was, I was pleased with it. It was physical. Your, your assistants mentioned depth. Where do you see it? You feel pretty good about what you have depth-wise. No, we got to keep we got to keep practicing them. <clears throat> we got we got we got a lot more bodies that I think are capable of helping us. But it, it, it's it, we still got 20 practices to go. <laughs> it's a long ways to go. I, I I make a big deal about you know the depth chart aspect of things still doesn't exist. We got guys competing.
you know. So um, it's gonna it's gonna be a fun camp to be able to figure out who our who our starters are. <coughs> no, absolutely not. Not yet. What have you seen from your defense so far? Uh, I, I like our maturity on the D-line. You know, those old guys, um, <coughs> Jabril has looked good. Kenny has looked good. They, they, they have brought maturity to our D-line. Um, they're grown men. Um, you know, and Zeke's old. Reese is old. <coughs> so it, it, it's, it's nice to be able to have older, mature guys. It, it, it reminds me. And I, I don't know, I think these guys have a chance to be better than three years ago, two years ago, when we had Christian and Noble and Darian, three seniors, old guys, fifth-year seniors, and a fourth-year senior. Program guys, guys that have been here for a long time, those guys are mature. It gives you a chance to be successful. If you got young guys at those spots, then you got no chance. And that's where we were last year. So we have older, mature guys that talk and have played football and, and understand the game. and. You know, it gives it gives <coughs> that second level and that third level, which we have a lot of experience in that second level and that third level, it has it gives them a chance to do their job, you know. How do you bring in guys that have played three, four years at other schools, graduate transfers or whatever, and get them as gung ho as you want them about playing at West Virginia? The summer helps, you know, having those guys all summer. Um, it, that that's critical, you know. I think if uh, <clears throat> if those two guys showed up August one, like say Rasul did his junior year, it'd take him a while to get acclimated to the way things are here. Those guys were here all of June and all of July. We worked with them as a staff all of June. <clears throat> uh, the, the the guys got to know him a little bit. It helps to have like Kenny, who's like best friends with like Dekeel and. Wendell and David Sills and, you know, that whole crew. So he came in comfortable. Um, you know, him and Jabril have kind of connected, and that's made that transition easier as well. But to answer your question, Bob, probably this summer more than anything. You know, what has Shea Campbell done to go from walk on to probably going to play a pretty significant role this year? Yeah, he's, he's, he's earned a scholarship. Okay, so he, he's, he's on scholarship. He's, he's, I don't know if he's take, took a snap yet, though. Uh, but just <clears throat> Gibby loves him. He, he's smart. You know, reminds us a lot of Justin Arndt, you know, West Virginia kid that walked on and, you know, does everything right. Um, you know, good football player, shows up in practice, did a great job for us on scout team last year. Um, you know, he's going to be on a bunch of special teams and a backup linebacker right now. So, you know, hopefully he lives up to what we think he can do. Then you talked about competition. What about the kicker situation? You got two kids there that both scholarship. What do you yeah, Evan is is <clears throat> he's a he's a clear cut number one at PAT field goal. He he's he's kicking the ball very well. <clears throat> we got some competition on as, as a backup kicker. You know, Hogan and and Simcox. Those guys are competing right now. Um, Billy looks really good. Billy's been on the shelf for about. Six months, um, you know. I, I can't remember if he finished spring or not, but uh, he looks good. Um, we haven't got into the competition aspect of the kickoffs yet. We'll get into that next week. <clears throat> That's really the only competition right now. Like, Deep snapper and kickoff guy are our competitions right now. If Evan wins the place kicking job, we'll like him separate from the kickoff job. Well, you'd, you'd like that if you had three different ones that can just focus on that. But then you got to talk about who's the backup, so those guys got to do it anyway. So at that point, if you know, there's there's been guys that do all three. Did Pat do all three? I believe he did. That's rare, <clears throat> but it's been done before. Uh, you got to be pretty talented in order to do it. But doing two, I think, is realistic. <clears throat> Coach Gary Jennings said that Coach Carrier has paired some of the older wide receivers with younger players to mentor. Is that something that's been done in the past, and have you seen any benefit from it already? Yeah, it, when, when and that's a summer conversation as well. <clears throat> you know, when those guys got here in the summer, we paired up. I don't I th Sam with TJ and Randy with Gary and. I think Bryce with 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 David or something, and and uh, just to help those guys out, <laughs> we can we can coach them um, two hours a week in the summer, 
which isn't very much. So you want those guys to be able to kind of just do what they do, just follow them around and do what they do. And and my goal, you know, we have we have four older backup receivers. We have four starters, four, and I ain't going to say who they are, but my mindset right now, four starting receivers. We got four backup receivers that are all old, <clears throat> been here for like three or four years, and then we got like four freshmen or them. I'm trying to get those freshmen to be number twos. So the, 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 the backups right now should be panicking that the older guys are helping the younger guys to try to beat out the older backup guys. Please print that quick. <laughs> I know you love talking about kickers. Is Evan... Since when? Exactly. <laughs> is Evan there because he's accurate? And if you had to try a 59-yarder for, for giggles at the end of a half, would it be Simcox in that situation? Or is Evan... No, Evan, I, we, we, he, he knocked through a 54-yarder yesterday, 53-yarder yesterday, and had, had some space. Yeah, he's, he's, he's striking the ball really well. He's earned a scholarship. I mean, he's 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 striking the ball really well. Those other guys got to keep competing. You know, I mean, that's just the way things go. This is not an injury question, I promise. But your two guys who aren't there are they part of your one hundred and five right now, or have you swapped them out? No, they're not. So they can be here and get treated and eat. They just can't be a part of any football activities. So they're not in meetings. They're not in walkthroughs. They're not a part of any of that. They're just. They're just rehabbing all day long. Rehabbing and eating and sleeping and doing all the necessary things to get back on the field. That, that, Qualls and Ferns. You can add two guys and them out, correct? We just never added them. We just, they so like we reported with 110 and those two guys were not a part of the 110. So, but they can be here and they can get treated and they can use the facilities and they can eat. Um, you know, technically, they were still in school for a while, so um, they just can't be a part of football right now. That changes when the semester starts. And then once school starts, then they're, they're being meetings. Uh, they'll be a part of walkthroughs. Um, I, you know, they're, they're both doing good. They look good. I mean, they're, they're both two kids that have played a lot for us, and, and they will play this year. You know, at what point, I don't know. That's a medical decision.